slide, so you'll have to read this along with me. Matthew 21. And you always check up on them, right? You always go back and read these scriptures that we're reading and make sure that we're reading them. And reading the same word, getting the same information, getting the same wisdom out of them, right? In Matthew 21, 20, it says this. And when the disciples saw it, uh, let's see what they saw. Let's go back to verse 18. It says, now in the morning, as he returned, this is talking about when Jesus the day before spoke to the fig tree, said those nine words to it. And as they returned, to the city he was hungry and seeing the fig tree by the road he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it let no fruit grow on you ever again immediately the fig tree withered away but they passed by it that evening and it didn't change right you guys get that right 24 hours before it actually appeared to be withered. And here in verse 20 it says, When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, this being the next day, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? And Jesus answered and said, I, I can do these things, and one day I'll be famous for them. No. Isn't that what the church believes? Yes. That isn't what Jesus said, though. Correct. This is what Jesus said. He said, What did he say? What did he say? <laughs> I was just seeing if everybody was along with me. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also you shall say to this mountain, and he was pointing that way, be lifted up and be cast into the sea, and nothing doubting, excuse me, I'm, I'm reading from my mind, not what is on the page, excuse me, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. There's that thing of doubt that I was talking about last week. And remember in Peter's walking on the water event, Jesus was walking on the water, and Peter is striving as all the other disciples could see, uh, as all the other disciples were intending to follow after Jesus, being a disciple, you you set yourself in course and you follow after what God's saying, right? And they're all trying to be just like Jesus, right? Wouldn't you be? Yeah. If, if he's called you to be like him, he expects you to be trying doing something here. And I see Peter constantly pushing the, the gauntlet out there. He's pushing her full forward ahead. And I think that's why he yelled and said, if you can do this, I can do this. If, if that's you, Jesus, bid me come. And I'll, I'll be able to walk out there. I know I'm saying other words than what were said, but we see that's what his intent was. I can do this. If you can do this, I can do this. And isn't that what Jesus was telling them? We hear it in the word. And, and here he even said, after I'm gone, you're going to be able to do all that I did, even greater things. All right? Let's get to do it. What do you say? And if, if, it, if we're going to do it, we have to <coughs> put ourselves in that situation. In Peter's situation, I'm, I'm 
bridge it out of my mind. Excuse me, I, I, this may not read exactly off the page, but in in that situation, in another uh, account of that exact situation, Jesus, as Peter is sink, starting to sink, it was just starting. It isn't like he got under, you know, over his head. You know, water wasn't over his head yet. He's starting to sink. Just starting to sink. He walked on the water. He was doing good until he beheld the waves and the wind. And when he beheld that waves and wind, what do you think would have gone through your mind? Ah. I can't do this. This is a wait, this is impossible. But he was focused on the one he's trying to be like. He's walking on water. And in his mind, he acted on those thoughts that came across, like I was talking about last week. There, there was a fact. Fishermen cannot walk on water. They can, they can float on it, on a boat, but they can't walk on water. That was a fact. But just like I said, you know, here we've had rainstorms and rainstorms coming through, but the sun is still shining. It's a fact that there's a rainstorm. And the sun can't make it through. But that sun is still shining is the truth. That's right. Above the clouds, yeah. It's above the clouds. You go high enough, you can see the sun is still shining. So truth supersedes facts. And in Peter's situation, the fact was that he started acting on was fishermen cannot walk on water. There's waves and there's wind. And when there's waves and wind, you still can't walk on water. And when there's no waves and no wind, you still can't walk on water, is what I meant to say. But what I want you to get is, what did Jesus say? He had this great burst of faith, which allowed you to walk on this water. Remember when the, the woman with the issue of blood came up and took her healing? Jesus said, Woman, your faith has made you healed. Mm -hmm. Healed. Whole. Whole. Right? Yeah. All right. So, what made her whole? Right. Wait a second. Didn't Jesus pray for her and lay his hands on her? Nope. And, no. and, and that Holy Spirit inside of him. Went in and fixed it all. No. no. Wait a second. So she walked up and took something. No. Yes. Took a hold. See, she kept on saying, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Right. Yep. On this play. Right? In Peter's situation, he said, if that's you, bid me to come. And I'll come out there. You know, I added those couple words. Speed verse 1, 2, and 3. No. But if you, if you see that, all right, here's the boat, and Jesus said, come. What's, what's he got to do? He's got to act on the word of God. Because Jesus didn't say anything that the Father didn't say. Right. Jesus didn't act out and do anything but that which he saw the Father do. And what does Peter do? Acting as Jesus, he says, if that's you, bid me to come. What is Jesus supposed to do? It's not me. <laughs> no, you I, I, I'm Jesus. I can do these things. And one day I'll be famous for it. No. Wouldn't that have been a perfect time to say, now boys, just cool your jets. Uh, I can do this. I'm God. No. He said, when he reached out and grabbed Peter's hand to, to give him that assurance that he could walk on that water still. Because they walked back to the boat. He didn't just drag them along there, half under the water. They 
and walked back to the boat. Yeah. He gave them that assurance, that stable ability. What is assurance? I'm assured that my wife loves me. Right? She's been good to me. Right? I, I have assurance in PD and Kelly that they're good to me. I have assurance in God that he's only good to me. That's right. He's never mean to me. Right. If, he, if he corrects me, it's for my good. But he's not beating me up. It's like I always said about, about the, the, the man teaching his son about the burner on the stove. Mm. Now, you see that, son? See how it's glowing red? Glass top stove. See how it's glowing red? Now don't touch that. It'll burn you. Talking to a little five-year-old. You get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to explain this, like God does, let me take your hand. No, he doesn't put his hand on him. He does not afflict us. He's, he's that good God that's always, come on, baby. You can walk. Come on. Come on, he's leading the way. Yeah. Helping us. Yes. Every step of the way. Well, in Jesus' time, he didn't say, sorry, Peter, you should have had more faith. Yeah. Walked off. It's your fault. It, Jesus was intending to walk to the other side. He told the boys to meet him at the other side. Didn't he? Yeah. Uh, I'll, see you on the other side. I'll, I'll see you on the other side. All right. So in Peter's situation there, he says to Peter, Peter, you, you did good. You had a, a short burst of faith. That allowed you to walk on the water. Why did you doubt? That's where that, that doubt thing came in. He acted on his doubt. The word says, to take captivity all the thoughts that pose are trying to exalt themselves above the word of God. In Peter's situation, the word was come, which means the ability is there. Exactly. In obedience. In obedience, the, the word that when he, Jesus spoke the word of God to Peter, it had the faith in it for him to be able to step out and walk on the water. And I don't know how far away they were. Obviously, they couldn't see him really well. So he's a ways away. And when Peter's getting closer to Jesus, then the boat. As Jesus is getting closer, he doesn't keep his eye on Jesus. His eye gets drawn away onto waves and wind. He can't see the wind. What do you mean, the wind? He can see that wave, and the wave is caused by the wind. So he's seeing an action, and here he acts in doubt. The action is the same thing as saying in faith. If you say something, that's doubting the word of God. It then causes you to start to sink. As I was saying, you're, you have this line of faith that comes down. It's part of this crane that picks up healing. And you're picking up healing, you're picking up healing. You're, 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 you're thinking, wait a second. I can't, I can't have that. I, I've got this pain. I, I've, I've got these symptoms. And... Oh, your words cut it off. Same as your actions. And I've done this before. That's, I can talk about myself. And here I am. I'm bleeding for my healing. I, I'm, I've got this headache that's not going away. And here, Lord, I believe your word. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I'm having my healing now. Satan, you take these symptoms and go straight back to hell with them. I'm not having this. 
and and oh, but I, I guess I know. I, I better take an aspirin. Mm. Why in the world do I go and get an aspirin bar? No. You know, you've got to start somewhere. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I started in that sick bed. I told the story before. Back when I was just starting to learn these things, I had the flu. And I had the sheet pulled up, shivering, not feeling good. And the Holy Spirit just it'll lay there in the bed with you and talk to you. And he was. He said, you know, you started <coughs> reminding me. What does the, the Holy Spirit do? Remind you of scriptures. Yeah. He'll bring up to you everything that Jesus ever said. You might have not read it recently. That's why he has to bring it back up to you. And here, he started reminding me of what Jesus said. And reminding me of what other ministers had said about healing. And I thought, yeah. And he said, well, why don't you act on it? Plus, God, I'm, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And here, I, I remember what, as, as I started going over different scriptures, as the Holy Spirit was bringing them to me, I thought, hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm not having this <coughs> I'm having my healing. Jesus purchased my healing for me. Bless God, I should be healed. Right? Everybody agree? Yes. Bless God, I decided to act on it. I decided to have that and not the sickness. Did I get better? No, I didn't. But I took the opportunity. I didn't know enough. Isn't that why the word says? For a lack of knowledge. And understanding men perish. Yeah. Well, it's easier to start on a headache. It's easier to start on something small, like a you know, splinter or a cut on your finger. You know, it's easy to start if you would just start. Just start. Set yourself to start. And here, in Peter's situation, the thing that separated him is he act, acted on that doubt. He, he beheld the waves and the wind, not beholding Jesus. In this situation, if, if you remember the account in the Old Testament where Moses is instructed to make the bronze serpent and hang it on a pole, which was a cross. And in this situation, the instruction was, behold, with a long gaze, the, the serpent on the cross, and you will be made whole. You will be all right. If you can imagine the terror that was happening in the camp of millions of people, there wasn't just one serpent. If there was just one serpent, still here you have a lot of people screaming. Bloody murder, right? People are dying. People are, are being bit all over. It wasn't just a, a small event. This was or millions of people being affected by, I don't know how many serpents, but a whole bunch of them. And everybody's crying out. Bloody murder. Because the ones that aren't getting bitten are running away from the ones that are getting bitten. And if you can imagine that scene, God's telling them, if you would just focus in here now on the cross with Jesus, on that cross, not with just a glance, but with a long gaze, that's what Peter was supposed to remember. That's where Jesus, being out on that water, and Peter walking toward him, he was supposed to keep his focus. Narrowed all the way down to Jesus only. Right? Would he have made it? He would have made it. When we act on the doubts that the enemy is putting in our head, did you realize you can't stop those? 
they're going to just keep on flooding in there. But there is the, uh, the ability to stop them. When you stop acting on them, when you stop saying them, yeah. the word says, when you say that word in your head, that's doubt, is when you took it. When you acted upon it, is when you took it. So, there's, there's things in here I, I no, never really, well, here. So, experience this with me. If, if I said, think of, because we think in pictures, not words, think of a black dog. Anybody have a black dog? No. Okay? You got a black dog. A black dog. And think of it. Think of a black dog. All right, and I'll describe it a little bit more with a white chest, white white paws, but the rest of them solid black, jet black, long haired, curly haired. You see how every word I'm speaking defines that picture for you, and you can think of that picture. Now, now, now don't think about the dog anymore. And, and here, keep 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 from thinking about that dog. Don't think about that dog. I, I don't want you to think about that dog anymore. You get wait. Don't talk about don't talk about the dog. Don't think about the dog. Anybody not able to think it? If you just shut up, I try to stop thinking about the dog. Do you get it? Yeah. That's what the devil's doing right now to the, everybody in the world. He's pounding them with thought after thought after thought. And, and as they're going through life, they're getting bombarded with all these thoughts. Are you too? This is how you stop those thoughts. And this is what the Bible teaches us. If, if you would count in your mind one to a hundred, whenever I tell you to start counting, and then I'm going to tell you to do something, and it's not gonna be the, I want you to say something, your mouth, just as you're counting, I'm going to just blurt it out, and whatever I tell you to say, say it, it'll be a righteous thing. So everybody start counting in your head, okay. one to a hundred, and I'll, I'm going to let you get there, but start counting. Ready? Go. Everybody say their name. Aaron. What happened to your head? Did anybody not do it? You, you. If you won't do what I believe God's telling you to do, just even as an example, will you do what He tells you to do any other day? Of course. If if you can tell when when you you were thinking thoughts of numbers and you're counting you've all been trained in this from school counting one to one to a hundred that that's not even a big deal you know i can i can sing that song you know there's there's one bottle of beer on the wall <laughs> no so <laughs> 101 bottle of beer on the wall take one down no uh, we sang those songs. That was part of good Christian activity, right? Uh, uh. All right. In, in your thinking, when you're thinking thoughts, you can control what you're thinking by the words coming out your mouth. Because your spirit, man, your, your mind will stop to see what's coming out your mouth If, if you then decide to say the word of God out your mouth, instead of the thoughts that the enemy is throwing in, and you know, I don't know, I, I had this happen to me. I was up on a skyscraper, something really tall, and we're walking around the edge of it, it might have been on the Eiffel Tower. 
and looking down and those thoughts come to you. I just jump off. <laughs> no, stupid, you jump off. <laughs> the enemy. That's not God talking to you. That's not an angel talking to you. Oh, I might be it. An angel of darkness. So realize you can stop thoughts with words. When you speak words of life out of your mouth, God's word is life to those that find it. Health to all the flesh. When you speak words of life out your mouth, it will shut off those words of doubt and unbelief. That's how you can fight it. Let's, let's look at what, what we have to look at. We're going to Mark 4, 26. Mark 4, 26. Mark 4, 26, in the Amplified Bible, says this. How about that? And he said, The kingdom of God is like a man who scatters seed upon the ground. This is Jesus speaking to you. So who is it actually speaking to you? God. God Almighty. Right? Jesus said, I only say those things that my Father says, and I only do those things that my Father does. Right? All right, so Jesus is speaking for God. And I'm repeating it. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God. Now, when we realize that the kingdom is real, and it's here right now. Remember, he kept on saying, the kingdom of God is coming near you. The kingdom of God is about you. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is in you. When we're talking about the kingdom, the word's in you, and the kingdom is in you. The Holy Spirit's around about you, and the Holy Spirit can be in you. He was talking about the Holy Spirit being God Almighty. He's omnipresent, right? He can be everywhere at one time. When, when we consider that as we focus on God, we move with God, we take his word and we speak it out of our mouths, then we're in the kingdom. He wants us in the kingdom all the time. If you're walking along, wait a second. Let, let me use this as an example. Psalms 91 says, those that abide, that have my other Bible. Because my other Bible just falls open to these scriptures. That, uh, because I go to them often. Do you go to scriptures often? You have to stand on scriptures. You have to abide in those scriptures. You've got to put right? your eyes on it. you got to put your eyes on it. Because... You might be like me and quote it wrong. And that's why I'm going. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. That sounds like you're in a different kingdom than in the kingdom of Jerusalem or in the kingdom of Spain or in the kingdom of Britain, right? Wherever the king is in authority is where you have his rule. It's, it's a dwelling place. You can... Dwellings, right? When when we dwell 
in the secret place of the Most High, we're, we're, we're always there. No, it means you can leave. If you can dwell there, that means you can not dwell there. If, if we say that we're in the kingdom all the time, how do you know? You can't see it. Just like Peter couldn't see the wind, but he could see the effects of it. When you see the effects of God's working power about you all the time, you're wrong. How do you have it? That's what we're talking about. I, we've been talking about it and talking about it. I want you to get it. That when you take God's word, you speak it out your mouth. And you believe it in your heart. Doesn't that sound more like we're getting born again every day? Right? How did you get born again? What is that? Romans 10 10? You, you believed in your heart. And that which you believed in your heart, you spoke out your mouth. Confirmation. That you believe something in your heart. So that means. In your heart, your spirit, man, you can believe something, and the confirmation of that is the words coming out your mouth. In in Peter's situation, the woman with the issue of blood, she was saying something out her mouth, and then she took action to go and touch the hem of his garment, and that pulled the anointing. She believed in her heart, confessed with her mouth, and laid hold, mm -hmm. which connected her to the anointing. Because the anointing was just in Jesus. The anointing came on the disciples after Jesus left, right? The Holy Spirit came on. That kingdom was where Jesus was now he's in you and his anointed words coming out of your mouth will affect your world around you isn't it awesome that that storm that was coming the whole world here if you were following the news was way upset and God spoke to my wife and said, uh, don't just pray over this. Don't just quote nice scriptures over this. Get into this. Spend a little more time with this. Look at it. Look, look at this. Speak it out your mouth. Do a little bit more here. If, if we just patty cake this life of Christianity, then we're going to be a mess. And I see plenty of examples of it in the world. There's churches out there that that they say they believe this Bible, but they're not talking about this Bible anymore. They're not even preaching the Bible anymore. They're preaching the Reader's Digest more than they're preaching the Bible. We can all fall into that same situation. But it's acting on the Word of God that brings results. That's what we came here to do, is bring results. Now, I can get results in my life, and I know how. I'm talking to you guys about getting results in your life, and it takes starting somewhere. Yeah. And, and God told me to dial this thing back and just make it simple and just start. Mm -hmm. If you would just start, see that in the word all over. If you would just do something. As, as we simply take God at his word, if, if Psalms 91 verse 2 is real, then you have to believe something in your heart and you say it out your mouth. 
here. And in, in Psalms 91, it said, what did it say? Anybody got it open still? Yeah. Psalms 91, verse 2. I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge, my refuge, and my fortress. And my fortress. You are my God. On, on you, on you. I lean and rely, and in you I confidently trust. As, as we we take what he said. Wait a second, wait a second. Pastor Steve, you're saying we have it. Well, what if I'm in the middle of that storm? All right? You're, you're supposed to speak to that storm. Yep. Didn't Jesus say that? Yep. Here we got it on. The kingdom of God is like a man who scatters seed. So this is Mark 4. Mark 4 was the, the whole idea there is the sower went out to sow. That's not just Jesus. But he was the first one. And in that time, he was teaching his disciples to sow. Later on, right before this verse 26, it says, all right, Jesus gave the, the, the understanding of this, this key, of how it all works. He said, the sower sows the word. And those that sow on a path, birds of the air are going to come, the Satan is going to come immediately to take out that word. To take the word out of their heart. Okay? When I was laying in that bed and I didn't get better, and he sure came to steal that word. Yeah. I was just starting. So I was that path. I I heard these things and I, I received them, maybe not with joy, wonder, wonder and amazement. What? I can have this? I can I can speak words out my mouth and they'll affect my surroundings. Is what Ministers were telling me. Brother Copeland was telling me. And I, I kept hearing it. So I moved on from that path where the word was stolen from me. I didn't get it that time. I see how this is working, Lord. <laughs> and then I tried it again. Next time I got it, I felt a little bit better. And I got it better quicker. That lasted... That, that flu thing lasted, I think, probably three or four days. It was only supposed to be a 24-hour flu, but the enemy was poking me with it a little longer, making sure I'm stealing this word. And I tried it again on the next thing I had come up. And sure enough, I felt a little bit better. And the next time I tried it, sure enough, I felt better even quicker. I felt relief immediately. And I walked it out. It was gone in hours. I thought, glory to God. My wife, bless her heart. Bless your heart. Bless her heart. No. Uh, that's my wife. That's not a good thing. I know. It's <laughs> whatever you want. It can be. It can be. My wife, you, you gotta, you got to realize was a different child. Not like my three older sisters. God was affecting my life early on. And he affected me when I was eight years old. I couldn't, for whatever reason, probably all the sugar, I couldn't think. I couldn't keep it together. I flunked kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. And fourth grade, and fifth grade, and sixth grade, and then we went to a total another school too. <laughs> and then I became an AB student, all, all just automatically. When I was eight years old, I received Jesus. 
and that affected my life. Did I become an AB student automatically? No, no. But I could think a little bit clearer. I could, I was still failing. I was still failing. But God was working with me, and I was paying attention to him. Isn't that what we got to do? Yes. If you want to learn something, you go to a teacher, and he teaches you something. You don't learn it all in one day, right. and I'll, ha, I'm all better. No, it's a learning process, right, Scott? You, you, didn't, you didn't take the final exam that first day. You learn something, and then they did a little quiz. And you learn something else, and they did a little quiz. And they learned a couple more things, and they took a big test. <laughs> you wrote a big paper. <laughs> we did some of those things too. Bless God with our good hearts. Thank goodness word has a count now. <laughs> <laughs> as as we what is that? That's maturing. I I started off that eight year old boy and I started maturing. Well, we can still have children in the church that are 100 years old because they've never matured. They never started. They never took the bull by the horns and decided, I'm going to steer. But as we activate the word, how do you activate the word? You speak it out your mouth and then you line your actions up with the word. It starts functioning in your life. The angels, as you know, let's go. Let's, I, I can tell you these things, but if you don't get it, I can show it to you out of the Word. Psalms 103.20. Psalms 103.20 in the King James says this. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Let's, let's read it in the Amplified. And, and the first Bible that I read was in the Amplified. And thank God it was a good one. The Lord has, I'm sorry, blessed, affectionately, gratefully praised the Lord. You his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Where is God's word in, in the earth? In my mouth. It's right here, isn't it? Yeah. It's in this Bible. Well, it's also, Jesus. it's also Jesus. And he's in my heart. It's also being reminded me by the Holy Spirit. He's in me too. And there's a lot of people in here. As, as we, we realize that, and I, I'm going to show you this, that God's word came down to us. And he physically did. Jesus came physically here. He, he per, God prepared him a body so he could walk here with us, train us. Wouldn't it be good to have Jesus here again? He's right here. He's in you. That's right. And, and he's, he's got his word. And he's teaching it to you. If you listen. If you won't listen, can he do anything with you? It's a hard thing to do. I was asking PD, how do you get people to do, do something? How do you get people to, to act on the word of God? How do, you, how do you change people? You know, get out the whip. Brother. No, that's not how you do it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't say that. <laughs> but, you know, think about children. How do you get them? There's good teachers and there's not so good teachers. I'm not going to say there's bad ones because we don't want any bad ones. But there's good teachers. Man, I've had some really good teachers. And you know what? In that sixth grade class that I went to, I think that was a really good teacher. For some reason, I grabbed a hold of it. That 
was halfway through my sixth grade, I grabbed a hold of what he was trying to say, and God made it click. And I acted on it. I did what he said to do. I became an AV student out of nowhere. No, it was all those years that I was working with the Holy Spirit and, and gleaning how to learn, being altered by him, listening to him. And as I matured a little bit more, all of a sudden, it clicked. I saw what, what these people were trying to tell me in front of this class, right? Isn't that how it happens with all of us? All of a sudden, you get it. You might have a teacher one year trying to teach you calculus. And I didn't get it. But what was really neat, I had developed my spirit enough <laughs> Blessings, Lord. <laughs> God, upon my, upon my spirit. All right, Lord. All right. As as we mature, we start acting upon the Word of God. We take and we hear the word of God. We, we walk with the word of God. We act on the word of God, lining up our steps with it. As, as we do that, the Holy Spirit is helping it to click inside of us. Let's, let's look at the next scripture. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him. Follow his example. As well beloved children, imitate their father. That's what we're supposed to do with God, right? right. That's what we're supposed to do with Jesus, because he was walking perfectly. Right. We're supposed to mimic <coughs> or imitate the one that walked perfectly. All right? Let's look at the next scripture. That's how your children learn. That's how children learn. <laughs> In Genesis 2-2, I just wanted to bring up Genesis. If we're supposed to mimic God, if you look at Genesis 1-1 and 2 and verse 3 and verse 4 and verse 5 and, right? Sounds like I'm getting trying to teach people how to dance. That's what he's trying to teach us. How to dance with him. When, when you follow how he made everything that you know and everything you don't understand and know, he made it all, whether you know it or not. But he's explaining it to you. He had a picture on the inside of him. He spoke words, filled those words with his faith, and spoke them out. And the Holy Spirit made him be. It's all him. He did it all. Well, he then says here in, in Genesis 2.2, 2, he says this, and on the seventh day, God ended his work. What work? Did God do any work? The work he's talking about is he spoke words. He filled those words with faith, just like we're supposed to, and spoke them out. How do you speak words of faith? Bless God, I'm going to have this. Right? When you mean something, you mean it. That's when your faith is getting poured out. If there's good in you, it's going to come out in those words. If there's bad in you, it's going to come out in those words. Whatever's in abundance in you is going to come out. It's like poking that sponge full of water. water on you, what are you? Wet. Wet. If I speak the words of God to you, they have faith in them. Yeah. And they hit you. And now you get faith on you. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. He, he rested. God is telling us there's a day still, there's a rest still to have. And that rest is what he's doing. 
He saw everything he said, and that had become because of what he said, and he sat back and rested. And he hollowed the seventh day to make it our rest day. That day that we take the words of God, we plant them in our heart, from the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks, we fill those words that we speak with his faith because we got it from him and we have faith just like God has faith and we rest that he's God but you gotta do it on purpose let's go to the next scripture we're gonna run through these couple there's not many Jesus replied this is the work the service that God asks you of you that you believe what he said. You believe in the one whom he has sent. That's his word, all of it. That you cleave to, trust in, rely on, and have faith in his messenger, Jesus, the one that spoke. Let's go to the next scripture. In Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, well, it's 8 through... 11. We're going to go through a whole bunch of here. This is God speaking to us. Remember, his word came down. This is Jesus speaking to us, right? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Wait a second. We have thoughts? Yeah, those thoughts. Sometimes they're doubts from the enemy. Sometimes they're thoughts from God. He's speaking to us. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So straighten it up. Have my thoughts. Neither are your ways. Wait a second. Those are the actions. The actions that Peter's, Peter started acting on. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts that make up my ways higher than your ways, your thoughts. Let's go to the next one. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and return not there again but water the earth you're the earth that he's talking about and make it bring forth and sprout because he did it in the, the, with the natural things that you know about he did it that's what he did he spoke words and they became what he wanted right he's telling you have my words and let them become what you want. What he wants. Excuse me, I'm spitting on myself. <coughs> that it may give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. Let's go to the next one. So shall my word, wait a second, he's, he's now straightening this thing out for you. I'm talking about my word, my Jesus. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent him. That's Jesus. He sent him into the flesh that he prepared for him. Okay? That's his word. He sent his word into you. child of God, right? Alright, let's go to the next one. Here, you see this. For you shall go out from spiritual exile caused by sin and evil. How are you going to come out of that? How are you going to come out of those evil things that you've fallen into, that the enemy has drug you into, pulled you by the nose, drug you into the gutter by? Uh, with joy. You're going to go out with joy. Why joy? Joy of the Lord is our strength, right? Well, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, with joy and be led forth by your leader, the Lord himself. He's still with you. And his word. I like that. He said that he's bold. I know it's the Amplified Bible. But whenever we consider that Jesus is the word, 
He's the light that came into the world, and he's the light of men. All right? With peace, the mountains and the hills shall break forth. Wait a second. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, Say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou plucked up and cast into the sea. Oh, the mountains are going to break up. The hills. Do you see how he's, he's always talking about the same thing? And here, shall break forth before you in singing. Because what part of creation is not going to obey God's word? Coming out of your mouth. Maturity is going to bring you somewhere. And as you come there, you're going to have more and more power release. More and more things are going to be available to you. Is that mountain going to move the very first time you speak to it? Or down the road? Or is the word going to continually be working at it? As long as you stay in that place of faith and you keep that crane working, it's going to pluck it up from wherever it is, that mountain in your life, and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness that Jesus was talking about, right? You see how all these things start coming together. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Wait a second. That, that tree that Jesus spoke to sure was not clapping his hands. But he was sure speaking to Jesus. Because when Jesus walked up to it, he answered the tree. And Jesus said those nine words, condemn the tree. tree. The disciples said he cursed it. No one eat food, fruit from you hereafter. Well, let's go to the next verse. All right, going to Psalms 119, 160. The sum total of your words adds up to absolute truth. We were reading this this morning. I thought that was so good. The sum total of your words adds up to absolute truth. Anybody know what absolute zero is? Or absolute cold? It's 480 degrees negative is where they say there is no more warning there. When, when you have something that's absolute cold, there's no more warmth there. That's where I see in the tree of life. The tree of life is his word and his word only. It's not mixed with anything. But the tree that we weren't supposed to eat from is that mixture. The tree of knowledge, of good, which is God, and evil, which was Satan. fear, all were coming from that evil one, right? And, and when you look at this, it says everyone, this is in the, the Passion Translation, everyone of your righteous decrees is everlasting. He's decreed things and decreed things all over the world through men which were following but I believe through the Holy Spirit, it was written down perfectly. So you can trust what the Word originally said. We still have people messing with the Word. And here there's translations and transliterations that are twisting that Word, adding other stuff in there, other thoughts and ideas. And I'll tell you, you got to you gotta know the difference. You gotta know what is God and what is it God. I think it's great that we ate from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. If we did, would we ever know the evil? Of course, God would have explained it to us. But we didn't have to experience it. When when you do something wrong, the reason there's there's not a test, but a proving. God's proving us. This is proving time. For what? Our placement in heaven? Or do you think everybody's on the same plane? No. No? There's, 
There's different crowns to be had, different abilities, different placements. There's going to be some in the throne room. There's going to be some in the courts. But to be part of Jesus in heaven, that's available. To be part of him. To be part of Jesus. To be part of the word of God. That's where he wants you. You take his word. You place it in your heart. You believe it. You make decisions about it. You, as, as our beloved dean of our school said often, if you only got five minutes to spend, spend or 15 minutes to spend in the Word, take five minutes and read the Word, and take 10 minutes and think about the Word. Make decisions about it. Say, that's mine. I believe that. I am acting on that. And I'm putting this into my life. And I'm ordering my steps by it. Isn't that what Jesus... That's good. Oh, isn't that what God was saying yep. in Isaiah 55? 8 through 11? 8 through 13? And then it went on. Into the next chapter. He's saying, you can order your steps by the words of Almighty God. And get the same results. If you stay with it, you can have the outcome. Will it happen immediately? Well, how long did it take you to get that cold? How long did it take you to get in the mess that you're in? How long did it take you to be led down the wrong road and be in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people doing the wrong thing? Uh, but just like a course correction. Whenever you talk, talk about uh, flying, the wind can blow you off course. You can have your needle pointing to the right place, but the wind can blow you off course. And whenever you figure that out, you then have to make a course correction, which means you got to turn as if, if, if this is the line you're supposed to be traveling, and you blew all the way over here, now I gotta make a line back to my final destination where I wanna make it. And God says in his word that he can make it with you, he can help you make that course correction and get you to your final destination where he intended you to be. That's how I got here. He planned for me to do this. He planned for me to preach. It sure took a long time to get me to figure that out. And for me to get on board, for me to get trained up, it didn't happen overnight. Right. It, but it started one night when I stopped putting, I'm not called to be a pastor, huh? I don't want to stay with you people. <laughs> I don't like people. It took a while then. Get me to stop saying that. But when I stopped, I repented and I said, Lord, <laughs> fix this thing. <laughs> I'm going the wrong direction. I'm way out in the wrong place. Help me get back. And here you only had me. You know. But all that time I was making that course correction, he was showing up in my life showing out in my life. And like, like I was talking about, when you're walking in that place with God, in the secret place of the Most High, you're dwelling in that kingdom. That, and I, I'm keeping my focus on Jesus. I'm keeping my focus on Jesus, not on the cross no more. He's raised from the dead. He's, he's got words of life for me. And as I put those words of life and acted on them in my life, it brought me where I was supposed to be. You can do that for everyone. So let's stand up. And say this with me. Lord God. Lord God. Lord God. I want to be exactly in your perfect will for my life.
Whatever correction needs to be made, Lord. Whatever correction needs to be made, Lord. Let's make it. I set my sights on you. I follow you with every fiber of my being. I repent of every way I misstep. And I choose your word as my focus. Help us. Help me. Be all that you want me to be. All you've called me to be. I choose that as my life. I choose your word as my life. And I choose to act on everything that you show me out of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.